Machine learning breaks down into three subfields. We have supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Starting with supervised learning, that actually itself breaks down into two problems. Supervised learning is either regression or classification. So regression means predicting a numerical value. In this example, we'll use height to help predict weight. Now you will see Python code, but I'm not going to explain it or talk about it. I'm simply going to show you the output of what it produces. If you'd like to see the Python code, please check the video description and click on the link to go to the Colab notebook that I'm showing right now. Here we have a table of heights and weights. And so each row is a person with a corresponding height in feet and weight in pounds. We can actually plot that on what's called a scatter plot on this graph right here. So for each person in blue, we have their corresponding height in feet on the x-axis, and on the y-axis, we have their weight in pounds. We will make a model that predicts the weight, which is a continuous value, so it's regression, from the height. So using this height, we will try to learn or figure out what the weight would be. So we could actually do what's called a linear regression, which means doing regression by a linear method. And so a linear method draws a line. And so this model, we can see green is the linear model. In height, if you take the height on any part here, we can predict the corresponding weight. And so if you had a height of say 3.75 feet, well, according to the linear model, I would predict that the corresponding weight would be this. We learned this model through the data. We used this data to draw this line and fit the model. And now we have a model, if we have any new heights, we can go and predict the corresponding weight with that. So any height we have, say 4.0, if we were to ask the linear model what the weight is expected to be for a person with height four, well, that person's weight would expect it to be 75 because that's where it falls on the line. So regression allows us to use an input and predict a corresponding output that is a continuous value like weight. In this regression, we did a linear model through the data, but it doesn't have to be linear. We could also make some sort of a curvy or step function, where this is a model that still takes any height and you could predict any corresponding weight, but it does not draw a perfect line through it. It is a non-linear model. The other piece of supervised learning is classification, which means predicting the class of an input. By class, we mean type or category. For example, what digit something is, 0, 1, 2, 3, up until 9. Now you or I could tell you this is a 0, and we could also say this is a 4, but we need a model that is able to learn from the images that can predict the class or what digit something is. Many machine learning models actually learn what's called a probability distribution, so for example, it would actually output for each of the possibilities, 0, 1, up until 9, we would have a percent chance that the model thinks, basically a confidence score that it thinks is the digit. For example, for this digit four here, maybe it was 80% confident that it was a four, but the final output will still be four because this is the highest confidence out of any of these values. A second component of machine learning is unsupervised learning, which is distinct from supervised learning. Essentially, the supervisor meant we have the output, we have that this is a four. And for the number examples, we had that each of these were the corresponding weights or the outputs. But for unsupervised learning, there is no obvious output or answer to the question. We are simply doing some transformation or finding information about the data. One component of unsupervised learning is dimensionality reduction, which simply means reducing dimensions. One such method is PCA, which will do a linear transform. Now we can plot each of the images on a scatter plot again because we are converting them to just two dimensions. So each of these points here is actually a digit represented by one of its dimensions here and another one here. So visually, you can actually see what each of the digits are just by doing the PCA into two dimensions. If you reduce to more than two dimensions, it's tough to graph, but it's often more useful for doing machine learning. Another common method under unsupervised learning is clustering, which really just means grouping. 
Say for example, we had these inputs here where we had some sort of a variable on the x-axis and another on the y-axis. We could run a clustering algorithm. The one that I chose in this example was dbscan. Another popular one is k-means. And so with dbscan here, we got that this was the one group, this was the two group, and this was the zero group. Each of those different clusters or groups that we found, well, they don't have some actual answer, some meaningful output of why one is different than two, which is different than zero. That's up for us to discuss, and maybe we could make some reasoning as to why these are different than these, and these are different from these, but again, it's unsupervised learning. There's no actual output there. We're just learning about the data. And again, this was easy to plot on a graph because we had two dimensions. If you had more dimensions, you can still do clustering or grouping. It's just a little bit harder to graph and color things. There is also other pieces of unsupervised learning, but those are the most common ones. Now we have reinforcement learning, which means improving through trial and error. Now currently this is not super common in industry, so I am going to skip this for now but it is a super cool field. If this was helpful, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see the code, again, it's in the description of this video. You can find the notebook there and have a great day.